Now, X minus one. Countdown for blast off. X minus five, four, three, two, X minus one, fire. From the far horizons of the unknown come transcribed tales of new dimensions in time and space. These are stories of the future. Adventures in which you'll live in a million could-be years on a thousand maybe worlds. The National Broadcasting Company, in cooperation with Galaxy Science Fiction Magazine, presents... X minus one... This week, the police chiefs of the country are meeting in Chicago for the 63rd Annual Conference of the International Association of Chiefs of Police. Tonight, X-1 is proud to salute them as we present The Lifeboat Mutiny by Robert Sheckley. we should have known better. In a way, we were asking for it, but frankly, we were short of credits and beggars can't be choosers. As a rule, I don't like second-hand equipment, not if I have to trust my life to it. But Joe, the interstellar junk man, can be pretty persuasive. He has an air of confidence when he walks down between the rows of antique jalopies on his lot and pats an airlock door lovingly or kicks at the ground gyros to show how firm they are. Joe exudes the way trees drip sap in the spring. And if you get too close, a little rubs off on you. Yeah, you see? Solid as a rock. Look at that plating. I'm telling you, this boat is a real buy. Well, she looks pretty old. Sure, she's old. Uh, now, don't give us that story about it belonging to a little old lady who used it to flip to church on Sundays. Now, look, boys, I'm not trying to unload something on you. I don't stand to make a nickel on this, but tell me the truth. Did you ever hear sweeter engines? And look at those servos. Pretty old. And that hull. I bet it's 500 years old and not a spot of corrosion on it. I'm telling you, you're lucky. It's a coincidence you two fellas coming in, you need a lifeboat. And sitting right here waiting for you. Like you was made for each other, is this baby. Well, she certainly does seem rather nice. What do you think about it, Dave? It does look pretty good. It's about what we need for the ocean survey work on Trident. But you know, Joe. Nah, they just don't build them this way anymore. Look at that propulsion unit. You couldn't dent it with a trip hammer. And note the capacity of the cooling system. It looks good, but some of these old machines, you know, I just want to make absolutely sure it's safe. Safe? <laughs> safe? He asked me if it's safe. Is it? Now, uh, step inside. Go ahead. Step inside. All right. Push that button. Right there on the instrument panel. This one? I am lifeboat 324A. Hey, the darn thing talks. Yeah, and in English, too. (laughs) It's equipped with a universal translator. It's completely automatic. I told you, they just don't build them this way anymore. Go ahead. Push the button again. I am lifeboat 324A. My primary purpose is to preserve those within me from peril and to maintain them in good health. At present, I am only partially activated. Could anything be safer? Uh, This is no senseless hunk of metal. This boat will look after you. This boat cares. I don't know. The idea of an emotional machine always gets me. I can't even stand those robot maitre d's. They keep slobbering over you every time you go into a restaurant with their tubes just pouring kindness and consideration. Ah, you're a reactionary. We'll take it. You won't be sorry, boys. You just bought yourselves a lifeboat. (laughs) 
Joe delivered this assurance in the frank and open tones that had helped make him a millionaire several times over. It wasn't that he was dishonest. Far from it. All the flotsam he collected from anywhere in the universe worked. But ancient machines often had their own idea of how a job should be done. They tend to get peevish when forced into another routine. Well, there she goes. Lifeboat 324A. I got her down in the afterhold. I think she's in perfect condition. You know, it's just what we need for those oceans on Trident. I hope so. The last thing I bought from Joe was an electric razor. Only it turned out that it came from Deneb 3, where they are slightly reptilian. And an electric razor is used to help them change their skin in the hot months. If you remember, I was in the hospital three months, and after the skin grafts, I don't know my ears from my elbow. <laughs> This job we were on was to survey the planet Trident for a real estate speculator who bought it for subdivision. Trident was about the size of Mars, but with a far better climate. There was no native indigenous population, no poisonous plants, and no germ-borne diseases. As a matter of fact, apart from one small island and one small polar ice cap, the entire planet was covered with water. There was no real shortage of land. You could wade across some of the Trident's several seas. Our firm had been hired to survey and plan a little mountain raising because the sector council frowned on selling building lots under four feet of water. We landed on Trident and launched the lifeboat. Okay, I got the sandwiches in the water. Ready to cast off? Aye, aye, sir. All mooring lines are on board. All right, let's crank this swan boat up and get going. Well, push that button. <laughs> aye, aye. I am lifeboat 324A. My primary purpose is to preserve those within me from peril and to maintain them in good health. At present, I am only partially activated. For full activity, press button two. Now, there it is, right next to the first one. Well, something's going on back there. Sounds like motors warming up. Hey, that sounds like a short circuit somewhere. You know there's no wheel on this thing? Oh, wait a minute. There's got to be some kind of tiller or control. Well, you look. That's all there are. Two buttons. Well, then maybe she controls telepathically. I'll try it. Hey, uh, 324A, go ahead slowly. Ah, there she goes. That's it. Starboard a little. Uh, wait a minute. I still don't like the sound of that. I bet there's a short somewhere. I'm going down to look for it with a circuit tester. Don't louse anything up. I like a boat that works this way. It gives me a sense of power. Hey, 324A, full speed ahead. Arnold disappeared into the bilge with a circuit tester, and I handled the survey. Actually, our machines did all the work, tracing the major faults in the ocean bottom, locating the most promising volcanoes. And when the survey was complete, the next stage would be turned over to the subcontractor. He would wire the volcanoes, seed the faults, and touch the whole thing off. After that, there'd be enough dry land on Trident for anybody. Now, by mid-afternoon, I figured we could knock off for a while. Well, we ate our sandwiches, took a drink of water from the canteen, and then had ourselves a swim in Trident's clear green water. Hey, give me a hand up. Yeah. That was very refreshing. Oh, yeah. I'll have to get this grease off with sandpaper, but I think I found the trouble. You see, the leads to the primary activator have been removed and the power cable's been cut. Well, why would anyone do that? Well, it might have been part of the decommissioning, but I got it hooked up now. Go ahead, hit the second button. Might as well have this thing working right. Okay, here she goes. response tapes, both psychological and physical, have been prepared by the best scientific minds in all drones. Ah, that's more like it, huh? Gives you a feeling of uh, confidence, doesn't it? Uh, I suppose so.